given that the public has such a low regard for the legislative branch, at least has for some time now, the last several years, given that the members uh, don't seem to have the same regard for the legislative branch that they once did, the institution of Congress and of the Senate, um, what can be done about that? Because surely it has a very damaging effect on policy making and decision making in our country. Well, it's very hard to answer that question because you have to go back to uh, first the personalities. I mean, I think you've got to have people making leadership decisions with an attitude that we've got to find common ground. We've got to find a way to to overcome our differences and govern. You know, this administration chose an entirely different and somewhat radical strategy. Their strategy was we don't have to come to the middle, we have to energize our base. Well, if liberals do that, if if that's if they one day take over and their purpose, their goal, their strategy is to energize the base, that means they go to the left rather than find common ground in the middle. And so long as that happens, whether it's right or left, you don't find that common governance, that, that comity, because no one's looking for it. And that's, I, I, I fault these guys for that as much as I fault them for anything. It's a great political strategy. They are winning, they, they probably are not going to continue to win elections, but they were winning elections for a while based on this energize the base approach. But it's a one hell of a bad way to govern. And, um, and until we understand that, you can't make any institutional changes that will overcome that attitude or that strategy. But institutionally, I think we've got to come back to um, more of an adamant determination to stay here, to do our work, to govern. And, um, and I think probably the only thing that will solve that is a major renovation of our campaign finance laws so that the hunt for money doesn't become so much a part of the process. The Senate is this venerated institution, and yet it seems as though it was bullied by the House uh, quite a bit in the last few years, partially, I'm sure, because uh, uh, all the, both the one party controls both houses and the executive branch to boot. Um, but just an example of your own uh, having been on the receiving end of this, some of the conference committees, that is where the House and Senate negotiate legislation, uh, have not only frozen out Democrats, but have frozen out particular Democrats, such as in your case, in the Medicare prescription drug uh, legislation, you are the leader of the Democrats in the Senate, you're a senior member of the Finance Committee, and the House chairman would not allow you to participate in negotiations, although you had been elected, correct, by the Senate to do that? How, how did that happen? Well, it, it, uh, uh, how did it happen? They just decided that uh, that they didn't want. They felt that uh, that because we weren't supportive of of uh, what they were trying to do, that uh, that our our opposing voices were no longer welcome. So they physically locked us out. And um, you know, at that point, we should have just called an end to the to the negotiations and said, "Look, until we're all together, um, this is this is ridiculous. You can't just physically lock out." Uh, anybody, especially the leader of uh, the, 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 the Senate Democrats. But that's what they chose to do. Unfortunately, uh, there were, again, members of our caucus who felt that um, in spite of uh, whatever indignities that might have entailed, getting the legislation was passed was important and uh, that it was uh, critical to keep negotiating, so they did. And uh, that uh, brings me back to this question about democratic unity, which was always uh, something you sought and had trouble <laughs> finding, as Democrats often do. Why do you think that the Democratic Party uh, in Congress um, has had such a tougher time settling on positions on not only economic issues, as we discussed earlier, and some social issues, not as many, uh, certainly national security issues. Do you think it's because, um, or let me ask it this way, did President Clinton's philosophy leave enough of an imprint 
on the Democratic Party to create any kind of a framework for unity, or did it not leave an imprint on the Democratic Party so that there is still a search for what Democrats can coalesce around? Well, I think that there was a very good imprint. I mean, I, I, Bill Clinton's approach to governance is very similar to to mine and to, to many others who believe that there's ample opportunity for good progressive legislation so long as there's, there's a, an understanding that it's going to take compromise. I mean, you can't be resolute, you can't be uh, dogmatic with regard to position and expect to find enough of a consensus with 535 members of Congress. You've got to be flexible, and he certainly was. Um, but I think in answer to your question about unity, I, I, I think we're just a more diverse group philosophically. We've got conservatives, liberals, moderates. Uh, it's hard to find too many liberal Republicans any longer. You can find some moderate Republicans, but it's almost impossible to find a liberal Republican today. But you can find many conservative Democrats. And so I think the diverse nature of our caucuses lead us to have greater difficulty in reaching consensus on some of these issues. But, uh, you know, we historically, I'm told, that we had the greatest unity within our caucus uh, that we'd ever had in our, in our caucus's history. But on some of these very prominent issues, um, it, was in, it was still impossible. Um, the impeachment of President Clinton was obviously a traumatic event for the country and certainly for the Democratic Party. Uh, what impact do you think that event has had, if any, on the way that Congress is able to function these days? Surprisingly, I would say that it's probably had very little effect. I mean, I, I think the Senate uh, handled the impeachment challenge extremely well, if I say so myself. Senator Lott and I worked very, very closely together. We trusted each other. We saw the debacle in the House and had a conversation, in fact, on my birthday, December 9th, where we agreed that we were not going to let the Senate degenerate into that kind of raucous circus. Uh, and, um, and I think we, at every step, really made an effort to make the right decisions procedurally and to and to, to do what we had to do in spite of how much we hated to have to do it at all. Um, my goal was to, uh, was to respond as effectively as we could, and as it turned out, we, had, we did have unanimity on, on the um, impeachment articles in the Senate on the Democratic side, and that made the job a lot easier for, for both Senator Lott and myself. Although Democrats really had a tough time uh, finding a way to defend President Clinton during that period, even President Nixon, during the height of Watergate until the last moments, uh, had much of the party behind him, Democrats were very reluctant to defend President Clinton. Why was that, do you think? Well, we were, we were just uh, flabbergasted, first of all, uh, having been assured that None of this was true, but there were. There, I guess I would, I would uh, differ with your assertion in one way. Uh, there was strong support and almost unanimous support from the beginning that whatever the president did, it did not reach the the definition of high crimes and misdemeanors. There was very little debate about that. Uh, there were a couple in our caucus who struggled with it. But, but by and large, that was understood and we had no problem saying this is not an impeachable offense. But we were offended that somebody of his stature and you know, the, the, the role model to the world, if not the country, was uh, uh, you know, abused his, his power and did such, such stupid things um, and, and gave opportunities to the Republicans to to do the kinds of things they were doing. So it was, it was just our our uh, chagrin at uh, the incredible uh, 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 inability of the president to make a good decision, a personal decision, that uh, that I think 
and it was that anger and that 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 frustration that led most Democrats to oppose and, and not defend him. 